My name is Carissa Keister. I um, grew up here in the Lakeland area. I work for the Stillwater School District as the community engagement manager. My husband Brian and I celebrate our seventh anniversary tomorrow, so we're pretty excited about that. Um, so um, right after my husband Brian and I got married, we found out we were pregnant, and we were pregnant with a little boy. And at 20 weeks pregnant, um, we were diagnosed, or he was diagnosed with anencephaly, which is a type of neural tube birth defect where his brain never fully formed. So we were told right away that it was a lethal condition. There was no way he could survive. Um, so at halfway through the pregnancy, we get this devastating diagnosis. But at that time, um, we decided we were going to continue on with the pregnancy. They gave us the uh, opportunity, as they called it, to uh, end the pregnancy, and that thought just made both of us violently ill. There was no way we were going to do that. So we continued through, and um, Nolan was born healthy and perfect, other than this birth defect, but he was with us for 32 hours, and we, um, knowing that this was going to happen, we really planned for his life to be everything that we could make it. So all of our family was there with us from the moment he was born. He was never out of one of our arms. Um, so he was just surrounded with love and it was actually a really beautiful life. I can't imagine a better life for a child to just be surrounded in love that way. So we had, um, we had that wonderful experience with Nolan but also the heartbreak of, of losing our only child. And um, so that was really obviously a very difficult thing for us to go through. Um, we were told at the time, though, by our doctors that there was no reason we couldn't have any other children, that that was just kind of a one in a million kind of thing, and we'd be fine if we moved on and had more kids. So about a year later, um, I was pregnant with my daughter, Evie, uh, and we were so excited to be able to welcome another child into our world. And she was born, and she was perfect, and she was beautiful, and there was nothing visibly wrong with her. And it wasn't until she was about three months old that we decided, or we discovered she was very weak. There were things that other babies were doing just she couldn't do. She couldn't hold her head up. Um, she had no strength in her legs, so we, we noticed something was probably wrong. Um, about two and a half months later, she was diagnosed with spinal muscular atrophy, which is a degenerative neuromuscular disorder. And we were told at that time she would not live even two years. So coming off of the heartbreak of Nolan, another devastating diagnosis was um, almost more than we thought we could bear. But we got through it, and frankly, um, after the initial shock and fear and um, just devastation of that, God really carried us through and helped us, just like Nolan, make sure that Evie had the very best life possible. And we found, um, we just found joy in every single minute with her. And she was with us for 27 months. She passed away um, when she was 27 months old. And that also was, again, just devastating, probably even more so. I think the compounding effect of losing one and then losing another, and then of course getting to know Evie for 27 months, she was just such a vibrant personality and it left such a hole in our lives after she passed away. Grief is messy and grief is ugly and grief is really isolating. And it, I think in my grief, I pulled away from people that I knew and loved. I pulled away from God because there was just anger and there was emptiness. But I found my way out of that through prayer, through reaching out to God. I knew that from my experience with Nolan, that life is so short and you have to make the most of every moment you have. And that's what God helped us do with Evie too. It was really getting past that fear, praying to God to just take the fear away and to let us find some peace. And I can remember the night I prayed that with Evie, kind of just dropping to the floor and in tears, the kind of tears that I don't think most people, I hope most people never have to endure in their life where you are just spread out on the floor and you have nothing left in your body, you're crying so hard and crying out to God. And he truly in that moment just filled me with a peace that I can't even describe. And from that moment on for the rest of her life, I just had a peace and a calm and was able to really celebrate every single second we had with her. So, um, from that moment on too, there were just a lot of prayers. Every night it was laying hands on her and praying for God to watch over and protect her. It was falling asleep at night, praying for God to give me what I needed to get through the next day. Waking up in the morning, asking God to give me the um, energy and the strength and the joy, I think was the biggest thing I prayed for. Just wanting to be able to live a joyful life and let Evie never see my tears, let her never know that there was anything wrong. All she knew was happiness, just like Nolan. So you have joy, 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 joy down in your heart. Show me your joy. There it is. I think the thing that I needed most that maybe I didn't get was just someone to walk alongside me. Not to say anything. 
just letting people know that you are there and you care about them. Um, you can never say the wrong thing. I truly believe if you're at least making the effort, you might say something that you think is, oh my gosh, I can't believe I said that. Um, but I don't know that that's, it's the effort that really matters. And most of all, ask about our loved ones. Um, I still want to talk about Evie and Nolan. It gives me great joy to talk about them. And the people who, who are uncomfortable and don't ever mention them like they don't exist, that hurts more than anything. So ask me, ask me about my babies.